Okay, so I think we can start. So thanks for being here. Uh, as you may know, I'm Mariangela Pellegrini, so I'm happy to welcome all of you at this webinar organized by the Yeran Eurobonet, so the European Reference Network on Rare Hematological Disease. Um, as you know, this session is part of a cycle of webinar 11, precisely, um, that tackles topics that have been selected by the patient's community and people living with sickle cell disease, so patients and caregivers, um, who selected 11 topics that are uh, addressed each topic with one webinar. So today we are going to talk about sickle cell disease and pregnancy, gestational risks. Um, before arriving to today's session, I want to share with you some house rules. So as you can see, this session is recorded um, because we are going to implement the webinar on our YouTube and e-learning platform. So if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can change your name in the Zoom or you can switch off your camera. Uh, at the same time, after the presentation, um, there will be a session dedicated to questions. Uh, and you have both modality to exchange with, uh, uh, with the expert of today's lecture. Um, so one is writing the question in the chat. And the second is unmuting yourself and raising orally question, comments, feedback, what you prefer. But during the presentation, your microphone will be muted. After that, you will have the possibility to unmute. So we arrive to today's session. As you as I said already, we are going to talk about pregnancy and the lecture uh, is led by Dr. Laure Joseph is an hematologist in the PHP Necker Hospital in Paris since 2015. She's in the team of Professor Marina Cavazzano. She specialized, of course, in sickle cell disease, and she's in charge of pregnancy sickle cell disease women at her hospital, who is a reference center for this uh, specificity. In addition, she's also involved in bone marrow transplantation and gene therapy clinical trials for sickle cell disease. So please, Dr. Joseph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marie Angela. It's a pleasure to be here today. So I will talk about uh, sickle cell disease and pregnancy. Um, uh, my uh, uh, presentation is really short to uh, encourage discussion after this presentation. And uh, I hope uh, uh, we could uh, talk uh, about your experience and uh, my experience after. So just to um, introduce, as you know, sickle cell disease worsens pregnancy and pregnancy can worsen sickle cell disease also. Sickle cell disease is, an, as you know, an anemic, an hemolytic anemia, with, um, which lead to vasoclusive events, with sometimes and often chronic inflammations, and many vasoclusive events during life induced lead to fun functional asplenia, with some infectious problem, especially during pregnancy. There is also a higher, a higher thrombosis risk, and all of this induce organic damages during life. With pregnancy, as you know, there is some hormonal secretion with um, estrogen secretion in particular. And with um, rapidly during um, pregnancy, since uh, first trimester, we observe increased cardiac output. There is a leukocytosis and hemodilution with uh, increased uh, anemia and higher thrombosis risk with this hormonal modification. All of this um, factor induce sensibility to infection, which is a very um, important problem during pregnancy in sickle cell disease patients. 
During second and third trimester, we observe reduced lung volumes with need to um, some exercise during pregnancy to reduce these uh, side effects. And all of this complication induced by sickle cell disease and pregnancy can induce fetal placental hypoxia and complication during uh, this period. I just want to uh, introduce uh, this subject with our experience in uh, France. We report recently our experience during two, between 2013 and 2019. And with this uh, registry, we report 1,270 sickle cell disease, pregnancy sickle cell disease patients. It is a very big um, register. And unfortunately, there is no code for genotype, but we separated sickle cell disease into two groups to um, analyze the different complications in patients with severe sickle cell disease. We defined this group uh, with um, a prescription of hydrox hydroxyria or transfusion program in year preceding pregnancy and the other with no treatment. We define as mild SCD, and we uh, think um, there, is, there are most of uh, SC genotype or other genotype in mild sickle cell disease compared to severe with most SS genotype. This register including overseas departments. Here is just to uh, introduce the subject, the population characteristics. Um, it is known that in a um, sickle cell disease patient become pregnancy younger than the French population, and we confirm this information. There, is, the, there was less diabetes history in sickle cell disease patient compared to French population, but more hypertension history. So we must be uh, aware about this complication to treat this during pregnancy. HIV history is uh, also most frequent, and uh, it is very interesting. There is a very interesting information because we found that use of assisted medical procreation is less frequent in SCD patients compared to French population. This information, I think, it's very important because sometimes um, women with sickle cell disease think um, it, it will be difficult to uh, become pregnant, but it's um, very, so, uh, the, frequently it's not a problem for these uh, patients. So uh, the key points of this study is that um, even a good uh, management, I think, of this population. Uh, they, they were more obstetrics complication in sickle cell disease ve uh, versus French population, even in mild SCD compared to control. So even in mild patients, we must be careful during pregnancy. And there is increased risk of preeclampsia in severe sickle cell disease with very higher risk around 11%. I think it's very important to talk about this because in France, we are not prescribe for every patient's aspirin, but I think this study can change um, the management. In my pregnancy, the risk of preeclampsia is less frequent, but uh, still significant, around 5%. Majority of patients uh, have cesarean delivery around 60% in severe SCD uh, very, compared to 35% in mild, but it, it's still more frequent compared to control to French populations. We observed more maternal complications in sickle cell disease, especially genital urinary infection, venous thromboembolisms and pulmonary embolisms, especially in severe SCD. That's um, very, it's, it's, it is important to talk about this because we need to prevent this complication during pregnancy with some, um, with some prescription. We observe very important risk of preterm newborns 
but uh, I uh, we could you could see after that the risk is for um, not um, uh, severe um, prematurity, but lo um, uh, uh, just for um, uh, minimal prematurity because of medical reason because sickle cell disease during pregnancy could have preeclampsia or could have infection. And sometimes a, a woman uh, experiment many vasoclusive crises. So we prefer to, um, to, uh, uh, to give born to the, to the baby to uh, decrease the complication for the woman and the baby. So sometimes between 34 uh, weeks of amenorrhea and uh, 36 weeks of amenorrhea, we uh, perform a caesarean delivery to uh, stop pregnancy and stop complication. But the newborn is uh, really well in, uh, during this term. So here is the distribution of full term and preterm newborn. As you can see, the French population is very different to, com to compare if we compare to sickle cell disease population, but the difference is um, more important for severe SCD patients with uh, many, uh, with a majority of patients who are. Um, uh, who um, are um, full term, but uh, many uh, during uh, 30, uh, between 33 or 37 weeks of uh, pregnancy, 37 percent you can see here. For my CD is less important, but it's uh, uh, still more import important compared to French population. But what about transfusion? It's a question for, for many sickle cell disease patients. The transfusion is not uh, cur current is not a um, necessity during pregnancy, but sometimes we need to perform transfusion to decrease the complication for the newborn and for, for the woman. In France, we change the um, uh, prescription. We decrease the prescription of transfusion because of a low immunization risk during pregnancy. So we uh, prescribe regular transfusion only for uh, severe sickle cell disease uh, women who uh, have uh, hydroxyria before pregnancy or we are um, in for patients with many complications as uh, for example uh, organic damages and so on. So you could see here that it's not the majority of patients um, that we transfuse, but uh, one third of patients actually in France and in overseas departments. Here is the um, uh, key points of management of pregnant SCD women. I think it's very important to precise that the follow-up of pregnant SCD women begin before pregnancy. If it's possible, I um, perform a preconception consultation to prepare the pregnancy and to uh, prescribe an electrophoresis for the um, future, future dad of this, uh, of this newborn. And after, during pregnancy, it's very important to uh, have a monthly medical and obstetric consultation since second and third trimester. After pregnancy, it is very important to continue this particular follow-up with a first consultation uh, during um, after the six weeks of um, after delivery and at uh, three months and six months. It is not um, uh, an obligation, but I think it's very good uh, to um, help sickle cell disease women to uh, be, uh, to um, uh, reassure um, uh, she will be a very good uh, mother and to help her if it's need with some medication and sometimes transfusion or uh, some advice about um, uh, breath, uh, food, or so on. 
So in conclusion, pregnancy is possible for sickle cell disease patients. I think it's the most important um, information today, but uh, instead improvement in care, uh, there, there is still significant maternal fetal risk for sickle cell disease women. So we have to improve this management to decrease uh, this significant maternal and fetal risk. And I think it is very important to precise that for all sickle cell disease pregnancy, we need a specific multidisciplinary management. It's not only medical and obstetrics. It's anesthetist um, management, a specific anesthetist management. It's very important to uh, prepare cesarean and uh, birth of the baby and the postpartum period with sometimes some vasoocclusive events. And we need to um, inform blood bank to prepare um, eventual complication during pregnancy or during um, labor. Thank you for your attention. I'm, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm waiting of your question. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph, for this comprehensive and very clear presentation. So as I said before, we encourage the participant to ask questions related to pregnancy and sickle cell disease. So I will um, let, I'm doing it at the same time, so sorry. Uh, I will let you uh, the possibility to um, unmute yourself and take the floor if you wish, or you can also write in the in the in the chat um, your questions. Uh, I can start with the first one because we had the occasion with the Dr. Joseph to talk again about pregnancy in during the ASCAT meeting, the session for patients. And I remember I was very um, impressed um, discovering and hearing about the testimonies of uh, patients that were told when they were young they that they will go through very highly risk pregnancy. And of course, this is a, a shocking notice to be heard by a young woman. So I would like to ask you um, if uh, today we have the same approach to patients and if, um, I mean, when you, you, you have the contact with patient, how you approach this, topic of risks in pregnancy, at which age you introduce it usually and how it is now the situation, because of course the testimony I'm reporting were referred by adult patients. So it were deferred to different guidelines, I think, and clinical knowledge. Thank you very much. So thank you for this question. So I think this, um, many things um, change recently for sickle cell disease patients and um, I think that uh, this sort of um, explanation during life is not the same today for uh, young patients. So I, I try to talk uh, with my uh, with girls when uh, they um, they they uh, come to um, adult departments. I talk uh, with her very early in the management to introduce the uh, transmission of the disease first and to introduce, um, uh, I think it's another question of the chat, the uh, preventing unwanted pregnancies, because I think uh, contraception is not um, really a discussion for pediatric uh, physician. And uh, uh, very often uh, my patients are not really aware about uh, uh, this uh, medication and uh, possibilities in sickle cell disease uh, uh, in particular. So I'll talk about this and after uh, if um, I, I prefer to, um, uh, to let the patients uh, begin to discuss about pregnancy 
and uh, very very often girls um, uh, has question about their possibility to uh, being a mother in the future so we uh, i try to reassure uh, um, her because it's possible but i talk about uh, the specificity of this pregnancy with some risk but with possibility to reduce the risk with a very good management in a department in a, an hospital who knows uh, many things about this disease. I, I try to explain them and I um, sometimes uh, I, I uh, um, some patient asked me a very curious question like uh, today, just this afternoon, a young patient talked to me um, about career preservation of um, ovarian uh, for her for sick because she thinks uh, she was um, infertile. I was really surprised because um, she she has no uh, specific problem, uh, especially gyne gynecologic or problem, but she thinks because of hydroxyria and sickle cell disease, she will be um, uh, sterile uh, in a few years. So she wants to uh, prevent this with career preservation. So it was, I, was, uh, really, I was really surprised and I explained it was not the case, but uh, uh, she's re really young. Yeah, she's uh, uh, only 19 years old. So it's very curious. I don't know if uh, it was uh, an idea of his family or if she re read something in internet, but uh, you're right. Uh, I think it's very important to talk about um, this uh, uh, opportunity during life with a sickle cell disease patient because sometimes there are um, wrong ideas, fake news, uh, I think. Um, in the, this population. So uh, for, I think it's, uh, it's my uh, management and I talk uh, uh, about this question very early with patients, with uh, women patients, but I don't know if it's the case of uh, my colleague because um, uh, uh, my um, specificity is pregnancy. So it's my topic, so I want to talk <laughs> about this with patients. <laughs> yes, you, you deal already with adult patients, so it's more a topic for transition, I guess, for not for yeah. pediatric, but for transition. Um, there is another question. You mm, have already a little bit answer or comprehensive answer. Are we ready just in case you want to add something, but I think you addressed this question. Thank you for this excellent presentation. What kind of sex education is there for sickle cell disease patients before they actually form a family and think about having a baby, thinking of preventing unwanted pregnancy and raising awareness on the importance of planning and adequate care? Well, you, I, you I, I can I can add that in my hospital, I have I'm very lucky because because there is a um, specific department for transition called La Suite. It's mm -hmm. in French. The following. <laughs> and the the, following. In, this in this department, uh, there is a um, an, an, uh, young uh, obstetric, uh, physician obstetrics um, who take care of very young adults between 15 and 25 years old. And for the first consultation, um, in uh, for, for the first gynecologic consultation, it is very reassuring for um, for my patients to uh, stay in Necker Hospital and to um, uh, to be uh, managed by a specific gyne gynecologist. I think it made, I'm really lucky for that, and uh, many um, young women SCD patients had a consultation in this department just after, just during of after transition to talk about um, uh, contraception and um, 
uh, you know, sex, sexual infection. And I think it's a very, very good, um, uh, it's a very good um, uh, idea of uh, some uh, uh, pediatri pediatrics uh, physician. And this idea is, uh, will be um, uh, extend to other uh, to other hospital because I think it's a very very reassuring for young women to come uh, for the first gynecologic consultation in the same hospital uh, than pediatrics. Okay. I'm not sure it's clear. <laughs> yeah, yes, well, I mean, at least for me. Then, of course, from from the audience, you can all write or unmuting yourself for. Um, asking for clarification or any comments is always welcome um, oh, for, for boy it's different i see the question for yes, boys is there uh, anything it's... for boys with sickle cell disease too they also play a part in it congrats for your initiative for for boys it's different there is no specific consultation um, unfortunately but i think um uh, during transition, we talk a lot um, about priapism, but it's not the positive. <laughs> uh, um, it, 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 it's a complication specific for boys, but it's not linked to uh, paternity. But I talk about uh, paternity to boys, I think, later compared to women. I don't know why, because <laughs> I... I, I I have the impression that uh, women are more mature compared to boy, but uh, I think I, I may improve my uh, management to talk on and talk with the, with them um, uh, earlier during a transi transition. I think it's a good idea to to organize a specific uh, management for them too. Thank you. So I've seen Vidifa Eya, you raise your hand. You can take the floor if you want. You need to unmute yourself first. Hello, Maria Angela. It's uh, Anna Hello. von Faye here. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I've just read what is written. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so I'm working as a pediatrician in Belgium uh, and I don't have a special transition unit. Uh, but um, when the patients are arriving at transition, indeed, we send them to the uh, city planning unit, which is an adult unit, but they, they talk about uh, contraception, of course, and they prescribe special contraception for sickle cell patients, uh, and they also talk about uh, SOAS, of course. For boys, um, I, I had a, a, a guy, indeed he was uh, some years older, who had uh, fertility problems and um, he, he was sent to the urologist to, to organize a, a spermogram, of course, but uh, before we start Hydrea in um, adolescent boys, we try to have also a sperm uh, donation to do cryopreservations uh, to prevent the hydrea effect uh, on the sperm. So uh, as a pediatrician, we are taking care of that. I can confirm. Yes, we, we talk about uh, effect of hydroxyria too. I don't precise this. And yeah. we perform uh, to uh, cryopreservation. And uh, it's different. I think it's, um, it's um, now um, hydroxyria is uh, introduced during pediatrics time. So uh, we talk about um, the possibility to stop hydroxyria to uh, become, uh, and uh, we discuss about uh, uh, possibility of um, a switch with transfusion if uh, it's need. But uh, uh, if I, um, I'm totally honest. I, I think I talk about this um, when um, the, the, this uh, people, these boys uh, talk to me that they want to be further and after we talk about this. And, but I, uh, I think uh, I will talk more about this uh, now. Mm -hmm. 
Can I still have uh, asked a question? What about oxygen administration during pregnancy? Uh, we don't uh, uh, prescribe systematically oxygen during pregnancy because uh, we perform a um, clinical trial here in NECA, but the result is not um, still published. And we don't find a positive effect of oxygen um, for um, during pregnancy, but uh, sometimes um, I observe some benefit effects in some patients. So I try to, uh, I try this uh, therapeutics in some pregnant SCD patients when the transfusion is not uh, possible because of immunization, for example, or if the, this um, woman uh, presents, present uh, vasoclusive events, even the regular transfusion. But it's only, uh, a, it's not uh, systematically uh, prescribed for in our center. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I have also, if there are no questions yet from the audience, um, I would like also to talk about, um, so I don't know if it is correct in English, pre-implantation and prenatal diagnosis. Uh, so I would like to, to know if you, if you handle these kind of cases in your pregnancy reference center and if you can share with us some example or some comments on your, your feedback on the, those two topics. Yes, I, I, we, we propose um, prenatal um, diagnosis uh, if uh, the, there is a risk for the baby to, be, uh, um, to, to have sickle cell disease. So we propose to hold women with risk um, but uh, I observe that uh, it's not uh, always accept for a patient because uh, um, sometimes they, they don't want to know or sometimes they prefer to wait uh, burst uh, to have this information. Um, uh, with this uh, proposition, we... Um, we propose a genetic consultation to uh, give all information about risk for the uh, newborn. And uh, this consultation, it's not done in our uh, center, but in an other center, uh, Henri Mondor, as uh, uh, I think uh, everybody knows this uh, hospital. And if the woman, if uh, the um, parents want to um, do prenatal diagnosis, we do this in a uh, Necker hospital after. For um, pre-implantatory um, uh, implantation, for pre-implant, pre I, I don't know the name in English, but uh, when um, the woman have already had um, a baby with sickle cell disease and want another pregnancy, but um, want to be sure it will be not um, uh, uh, a baby with sickle cell disease. We propose a pre implantatory diagnosis, but um, that take times around two years to um, uh, to to do this, um, this management. So it's very long for uh, parents and men, in many cases, uh, parents uh, finally uh, don't uh, do this, um, this uh, management and uh, have a natural pregnancy. It's not uh, uh, good, but uh, it's uh, due to the very big delay for this management in France. I don't know if it's the case in Belgium, but in France, it's a very big problem to organize a pre-implantation diagnosis. Thank you very much for this answer. So um, is the raise end the previous one or is a new one, sorry. 
Sorry, yeah, if I can yes. interfere. <laughs> sure, please. I didn't know yeah. if it was the previously or, but sure, it, it, more than welcome. <laughs> for the pre-implantation diagnosis. So in Belgium, um, the delay is, is shorter, luckily, because we have several centers where we can send our patients. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working in Saint-Pierre, and already I can send my patients to Erasmus and UZ Brussel, and I'm not aware of the other centers uh, in Flanders nor in Wallonia, but already in Brussels, I have two centers where I can do my uh, pre-implantation diagnosis. And then we have a specific specificity in Belgium, which we can't do in France. Uh, in Belgium, we can uh, do pre-implantation diagnosis to prevent the birth of a sickle cell patient, uh, SS or SC. But we also can add the detection of the HLA identity. And so we can uh, select, we have the chance to select a non-sickle cell baby with the good bone marrow to be a future donor for the sick patients. Um, I know in France it's not uh, allowed to do the, yes, those techniques. Yes, it's not allowed. Yes. Yeah. But in Belgium, we have the chance to be able to do that. And if we do so, or if the parents want to do so, uh, this takes six months time to prepare. So. Compared to your two years, it's incredible. We only yes. need six months because the sickle cell pre implantation diagnosis is a technique which is ready. It's always the same mutation we need to look. So there is no preparation needed. So I don't understand very well where the, the, the more than a year comes from. It, it's not specific to sickle cell disease. It's specific to... Um assisted pro, um, it's assisted oh, yeah. procre procreation in in france with a delay for everybody especially uh, in for pre-implantation diagnosis okay that's a I pity hope. yes thank you so much so um, we'll see if another question pop up I think we have already like seen all the aspects linked to pregnancy, but please do not hesitate to uh, comment or ask questions or share an experience if you want. Okay, I think uh, everything has been addressed. So I would like to really thank again, Dr. Joseph to be with us and share your expertise and your time with us. And of course, also to the audience for the great debate we had. And I wish to all of you a great afternoon and I hope to see you uh, on the next uh, session. That will be on, I don't remember by heart, <laughs> I think <laughs> it will be the 4th of uh, July on uh, sickle cell disease and immune disease. Um, we also have an expert from uh, APHP uh, Necker Hospital. So it, um, the, the, the speaker will be Slimane Alali, hoping to pronounce it properly. And so thanks to everybody. Thanks to Dr. Joseph and wishing you a great afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>